it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and I'm back again with part two of the April Bird Abode. On uh, this one, we will be making the mini album that fits inside the birdhouse. This is a new series that I'm doing where I have a monthly birdhouse that will typically come out during the first month, week of each month. This one's in the third week because this is the first month we're doing it in April. This one is called April Showers. And I just did the video to actually construct the birdhouse. So each month there will be a birdhouse um, thematic to that month. Um, next month is Mayflowers, April showers, Mayflowers. Um, and each will also contain a mini album. Each of the mini albums, which fit inside in some fashion, so they all have an opening inside. Now this one has kind of a matchbook style cover to it. So the album inside is also going to be a matchbook style cover. In this series, each of these mini albums will be a different binding method. So by the end of this series, the series of 12 of them, you will have learned 12 different methods for binding mini albums. I'm also, during the course of doing this, going to try to give you some history. I've been doing a lot of research on hand binding books, and so I'm going to pass along some of that information that I've discovered. Um, it, it's been pretty fascinating. So while we're constructing this, I'll kind of give you some different, um, some historical things regarding um, how binding methods for book binding then are interpreted into scrapbooking and mini albums. It's really been rather fascinating. I should do a book after all doing all this research on all of this. Um, it's been a lot of fun. So this mini album, as I said, is a matchbook style. And what that means is you have a longer cover, a shorter end here where it is bound together, in this case with a ribbon, and opens this way. In a classic matchbook, if it actually had matches, this would also wrap around um, to the front in a, in a classic um, you know, little book of matches. But this is a very popular method for used for doing a simple um, binding method for a mini album. So what we're going to start out with is we'll make the covers, and then we'll move inside, and I'm going to show, to show you how to make these pages. I, these are kind of what I call a burrito wrap type of page. So it creates a pocket, a large pocket for a large photo mat, which will hold a 4 by 6 photo, as well as a pocket that holds some smaller um, tags which can have journaling or some smaller photos in this era of things like Instagram and stuff when you can print out those small little photos um, it's it's super fun this is a super quick super easy super simple mini album I don't have a lot of embellishments other than the pattern paper in this one and some punched edges you could add as much embellishment to the pages as you want to. One of the beauties of this method is that you could always, add, if your album gets a little bit thicker, you could add, um, untie your, your binding and um, allow for your album to be a little bit thicker. Might not fit in the birdhouse if you do that, but it will allow you to expand it and you can put in as many pages as you wish. Now in this one I've put six pages in, but you can make any number of pages with this method of binding. That's one of the beauties of it. It's also a method that you can add to by just untying, leave your <coughs> excuse me, ribbon long enough and you can expand your album to whatever depth that you want it to be. So let's go ahead and get started first on our covers. Now I have cut chipboard. I've got a lot of this all prepped and ready to go to start with. I've cut some medium weight chipboard which is about the thickness is a couple layers of cereal boxes of what the stuff that I use. I use a paper accents chipboard um, and this is point zero four zero I believe is what it is. Of course as soon as I, I got this at zero four zero two. It's one of those but it is a medium weight. It's heavier than what is on like the back of um, a pad of paper or something like that. It's, and it's heavier. It's about twice the thickness, maybe three times the thickness of a cereal box. It's just really nice, sturdy chipboard. I love the stuff. 
So you're going to cut. Now, with the Bird of Bodes, let me back up a little bit. With the Bird of Bodes, the mini albums and the bird houses themselves, I do have patterns available over on my store website. Um, and that information is just below the video screen here where it's got my store website as well as my new blog site. I've had a new blog site since last October. Um, and it's got a lot of information. It's where all of my archived Ustream videos, that sort of thing, are. Um, but um, to, to, you can purchase the pattern, which has all of the cutting instructions, dimensions, all that sort of thing in it. Um, I also have kits available, depending on when you're watching this video, so whether those kits are still available. The kits are available on a quarterly basis. So this first quarter, April, May, and June, I still have some available. Um, and then sometime in late May, I will have July, August, and September available. You can purchase them for a cost savings as a group, all three of them in the quarter, or they can be purchased separately. Um, so you can pick and choose. So if you just want to do one month or you want to do all three months, either way, you can get the kits that way. Again, it depends. They're not, they're available for, a, you know, a limited time. When they're gone, they're gone. So depending on when you're watching the video, those are available over on my store website. The pattern will always be available. Um, and, and again, that has all the cutting instructions, dimensions, all of that. Basically, with these YouTube videos, I'm just giving you um, how to assemble the project. You can use these same techniques that I'm using and develop your own mini albums from them, your own sizes, that sorts of thing. Okay, so you're going to have a larger piece that is your main cover then there's a joint and then your smaller spine piece. And this spine piece is what we'll go punch holes in and thread the ribbon through. You do want to have a joint that is approximately, um, the width of it is approximately twice the thickness of your chipboard. If you have problems making where at these joints, if you're, you're uh, making a cover that has a joint in it and you have problems with your paper cracking, many times it's because your joint isn't quite wide enough and it puts extra stress on the paper. Some papers, however, just crack. Paper does have a grain much like fabric does. And some way, in some directions, it's more likely to crack than others. Some manufacturers are more likely to crack than others. It depends on the, the, um, how finely grained the paper is itself, so the pulp and such. Um, it can get complicated, but generally, twice the thickness of your chipboard, and you're going to be okay. This is not one that's going to get bent at a 90 degrees. This is just more of a flapping type of joint. You are going to attach it to your pattern paper, and you're going to then trim it to the edge. This is not a wrapped cover. We'll be doing other covers that are wrapped covers. But we're going to trim our pattern paper at <coughs> excuse me, the edge of my chipboard, of course, leaving this um, joint um, uncut. Um, then our next step is then, this is our outside of our cover of our book. This paper collection is Lucky Charms by um, American Crafts. And it has a cute, on that little strip that you typically cut away, has some cute little sayings. Like this one says, you make me happy when skies are gray. I went ahead and incorporated that into my cover. Um, and then the back cover is just the plain stripe. Got the back cover made already. So covered my front, and now I'm going to cover my inside. Now I had 12 by 12 paper for making the um, the birdhouse, and I'm using that on the outside of my cover. However, on the inside, I'm using six by six paper pads, and it's like um, this is six inches. What do I do down here? Easy fix. You just piece it on here. So here's the paper that I'm going to use for my inside of my cover. I want to make sure I get everything oriented the way I want to. This can just get attached down with your favorite adhesive tape runner, glue, Zyron, whatever, whatever it is, is your favorite method. I always feel um, adhesives are kind of subjective, depends on your climate, personal preferences, that kind of thing. So I'm going to just attach that down. Now at my joint, I always use an aggressive adhesive, whether it be glue or a real strong adhesive tape like score tape, wonder tape, one of those kinds of things. I always put that on each side of a joint um, to help keep the paper from puckering and it's going to just make your joint be a little bit more stable. So I've got the tape on each side of that joint and then I have a piece that I've cut 
that I've punched so that I have an edge on it similar to one that I used on the outside of the birdhouse. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I've made this so that it overlaps slightly. In a quarter inch, half inch is sufficient. You want to make sure if you're doing a punched edge and it has some open work that it is um, sufficient overlap so that your chipboard doesn't show through that. Now I'll go ahead and peel off the paper backing. I've been known to leave the paper backing on there and then it doesn't do as much good. Um, and then I will around the perimeter of this attach this with my um, ATG. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna have cough tickle. Of course, as soon as I turn the video on, it does that, doesn't it? So I'm gonna get that so that it lines up with the um, cut edges of my chipboard. And then I will gently fold it both ways at my seam. Make sure I've got my adhesive nicely attached. And then you get this nice clean joint by doing that, by having that either glue or adhesive on each side of your joint. Um, on this one now, I'm going to chomp all four corners because that's just the style of how I want it to look. It's not doing anything but being a decorative element. These are We Are Memory Keeper Scallop Chomper, and the beauty is it will chomp through heavy chipboard. So there's my basic cover. Next up, I'm going to want to go ahead and punch my holes. Now, um, this um, hinge, uh, not hinge, this spine portion of the hinge is three quarters of an inch deep, so I'm going to want to center and go about three eighths of an inch deep on it, and I'm going to come in approximately one inch. You know, you can adjust as you um, as you want to. So I'm coming in, oh, I'm sorry, I came in an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. So then they're two inches apart. And if the dog is going to start barking, I just know it. <laughs> so, um, and then, shh, Mimi. I do a video, the kids, the do kids interrupt, the dog barks, all of that. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? So then I'm going to use my crocodile or big bite and punch my holes that I will be using to string my ribbon through. I'm going to be doing those same hole locations on the back so I can use this kind of as a template, line those up and I can trace those circles in there, punch those again and then I can um, also use it as a template for the um, pages as well. All right, so that gives us our two matchbook covers. Now, one of the things, as you see, I've just pierced through my covers or punched my covers, and then I'm going to put ribbon through that. This is one of the two, when you really distill down how Books are bound, or and then, then in turn, how many albums and paper crafting journals and stuff are bound. This you know ties right into that. Essentially, and this is my own personal deduction based on the research that I've been doing. Essentially, it boils down to there's two really, truly two types of binding, and then everything is just a variation. Sometimes it's a little bit of a stretch to see the variation, but there's a variation, variation on the theme. And basically, it's one, um, one method is, and these are handmade bookbinding methods, not man, modern manufacturing with the glue and adhesives and all of that, what they do, but, but just hand-bound books. There's the piercing with another material, ribbon, a ring, um, leather, whatever, that goes through that piercing to hold the pieces together, whether it's a single ring or um, ribbon that comes up down one hole and up another so that it makes it more stable, you know, in the um, torquing direction. Um, but essentially, there's the pierce and attach. This also includes ones that are, for instance, stitched or sewn, like the Coptic methods where you're piercing holes and you're running thread or cord through in several places 
um, the stab, the Japanese stab method, which is very similar to the Coptic methods. Um, and we'll be doing these different kinds of methods as well. And if so, if these terms are unfamiliar to you, um, Keep watching over the course of the year. We're going to be going over these two different kinds. The matchbook, ring binding, spiral binding, binding also is where you've punched a hole and inserted something else through that hole to hold the different layers together. Um, then the essentially the other method, I call the fold method. Um, whether it's taking a stack of papers and folding them in half, and then whether this is stitched together stapled together. Many magazines, as we know, are done um, this fold method. When you really look at it, so let's see, I have four layers of paper here. Mimi, four layers of paper here. And if you really think about it, my stack the deck method is essentially a stacked folded type of method. Its hinges um, are part of the fold method. So my stack the deck, I've layered. They just happen to be folded in different places. Um, this is a very common method is to punch through um, a hole here and here and stitch these together. It's still, while it's still piercing through it the way this one is, um, but it's at a fold that you're doing it. Hinges, hinge methods, accordion fold. Um, let's see. Oh, this, this sewn at the fold is called a Smythe binding. Smythe with a Y, or Smith with a Y. Um, so a lot of the the hinging methods, um, you know, my stack the deck, my perfect hinge, all use um, a fold method. So there's the folds method and there's the pierced methods that we essentially today are using on our mini albums. Um, historically, let me give you a little history uh, in terms of just books. You know, we started out, as, while I'm getting this stuff all prepped, we started out, you know, as cavemen drawing on on um, the walls of our homes, you know, in caves and that sort of thing. But then we wanted to start to be able to take our writings with us. And so we started doing it on stone tablets and chiseling it into stone tablets. Then back with the Egyptians and I'm sure the Chinese, they started writing on leaves and papyrus leaves and that sort of thing. And they would roll them to form scrolls, much lighter than carrying a piece of slab of stone around. Um, then when um, they moved from doing that sort of thing and wanting to do pages, the pa paper was invented by mashing um, uh, plant fibers and mixing them with water and then drying them. And they were able to form um, papers and pages. The first books were diptychs and triptychs were two part or three part, which were attached with hinges. But then as, Time went on, for instance, the Romans started actually creating books and binding them together. And so all of these ancient binding methods for hand binding books came about. It's been fascinating doing this research. As I said, I should write a book just because I'm having so much fun um, researching all this. So anyway, back to our mini album. With this one, with these pages, I've got a couple of the pages. I folded some of them up already, but I left two of them. Um, unfolded. Um, you're going to go ahead and cut them and score them according to the dimensions that are in the pattern. But essentially you're going to have a band over here that fits into your binding. So it's that three quarter inch, that same depth of, as where that's going to be in our matchbook binding. And then this portion is going to fold over. Here's a tab and this is going to form a pocket that it um, is the tag can go in from the side. And this is going to form the pocket here that the smaller tag. So you'll have a pocket. So this is going to form a tube. So we'll have a pocket here. And then we'll have an open pocket along the front face. Now I have punched this with a deep edge, Martha Stewart deep edge punch. This one's called heart lace. But it could be done with any kind of punch. Or you could also leave it plain and cover it with pattern paper if you didn't want to do the punching. You could also do um, any kind of die cut edge, that sort of thing on here as well. Now to start this, you're going to have the three quarter inch binding edge on the left side and you're going to have this punched edge pocket edge at the bottom and you're going to fold that up. And at this point, just go ahead and finger press it. 
You're also going to go then up at the top edge where you have a half inch tab. I trimmed the corner, I tabbed my corner, and I'm going to fold that one. No, that's going to fold back. So this one's folding up, that one's folding back. Again, finger press. We're going to then turn this over so that that tab is up, and we're going to bring that tab down to meet the fold, lining everybody up. So there's that pocket, and there's the tab underneath. We're going to put glue or adhesive on this tab to close that. That's going to give us a pocket here. Then we're going to glue along this edge, glue that down to form this pocket, because this end of the pocket will get sandwiched into the binding. So let's go ahead. For speed's sake, I'm just using my um, adhesive tape, but you can use glue or your favorite adhesive. You want to make sure it's a relatively strong adhesive since this is an interactive pocket. So I go ahead and touch this down, making sure my two fold edges line up with each other. And then after I've got everybody attached down, I use my bone folder to give everybody a nice crisp crease. So then I will go ahead and glue along that edge. But I call this kind of a burrito type fold because it kind of, it's a wrap. It wraps around to form the pocket and then that extra little extra flap creates a pocket here. And then I'm going to fold this in both directions. This three quarter inch tab here that's going to fit into my binding. So let me do a second one to let you see that. So I'm going to start with my binding edge on the left, my pocket with the punched edge here on the bottom, and I did this one wrong. That's two of them. So let's erase my score line. I use a Teflon bold bone folder, and the beauty is, is I can pretty much erase, essentially. I did one other one, and I thought I checked them all before I started the video, but obviously I didn't. Oops. So the edge opposite this fold edge has that half inch tab. So let me just score that again. Once I have pattern paper and everything on here, nobody will notice that I did this. Okay, back once again, three quarter inch tab, and our punched edge is on the bottom. I'm going to fold that one up. This half inch tab down here is going to fold under. I'm going to come back and tab my corner. Roll this over, bring that so that tab lines up the fold of the pocket. So those two fold edges are going to come together, adhere them. Okay, both videos that I've done today, I have managed to do a boo-boo. Easy fix boo-boos though. All right, so I'm gonna bring these so that those two folds, I'll try to keep my head out of the screen. I go ahead and attach that on, attach that on, to attach, and then go ahead and score. Like I said, kids and dogs interrupt while I'm in the middle of the video. It's like they have a sixth sense about them. All right, so then I'm going to glue along that edge and attach and then fold the opposite edge. So then I'm going to put them in whatever sequence, color sequence that I want them to be. You can use whatever, you know, random, whatever kind of way you want them. Let's see, maybe I want that guy there, that guy. So I'll go pink, orange, red, blue, green, yellow. So then those are all lined up. Pockets are open on this end, binding edge all on this side. So then what I'll be able to do is use this as my template to line these up. I happen to have my pages being the same width as my cover. If my pages were narrower, <coughs> excuse me, then 
um, I would want to center my pages on my cover, but they line up perfectly. The other thing you'll notice, I'm going to want to punch, um, chop my corners. So I can then go through on each of these, making sure I'm marking at the end that has the um, folded spine edge. Line those all up, and I'll be able to punch all of them. Love them crocodile punchers. I could probably do two at once. Oh, it is thick down here at this bottom edge. So, and then I, I will chomp the corner as well. All right, so put those back in the order. So then I can go through with my crocodile and punch. My one issue with this is that things get hung up in there the way we all use it. <laughs> I talked to him about that at CAJ. It's like, you need to fix that. We can't see because the little fingers get stuck in there. If they just made this little post that comes up about a little bit longer, then it would clear the hole. All right. Two more to go, and then we'll chop our corners. We'll just see around the other. Okay, let me wipe up all my punch poo. Get rid of that. Get rid of the crop dust. So now I can go through with my scalloped edge. Go through and punch those corners because then those will line up as well and it'll just be all clean and tidy and look great. And now the dog's going to bark again. Ah. Mimi. She's quiet all day long until I'm doing a video and then she gets noisy. Isn't that always the way? All right. So then what we can do is these all line up. We can put our back one on and our holes should line up and they sure do. You can see through there. Whoops. Well, you can't see through with the camera, but they they go it does go all the way through. Let me see. Where do I have? Where's a poke tool? See? Boop. Goes all the way through. So the holes all line up. Then you will take um some ribbon and you'll be able to thread that through. I'm not going to take the time and thread that through cuz since I've already got the one that's already threaded so you're just going to take and go down one side, across the back, up the other side, and then tie it in a bow. Now when I'm tying a bow, I always tie a knot first and tie, then tie the bow. So that way if the bow comes untied, you have the knot there. But don't make your knot so tight that if you need to expand your album, you can't. You can. Um, you can then add embellishments to your cover, some flowers, some punched and cutouts and that sort of thing. And then inside, as I mentioned, there's some large tags, the sizes and such are in the pattern, um, and you can add some cute ribbon um, onto the ends. Then you can either make a large tag that fits in this pocket, because this pocket is a good size, or you can make the smaller ones. Again, I've just covered them with pattern paper, and then there will be small photos. You can add further embellishments. Just be aware, you don't want your book to get too thick if it's supposed to live inside the birdhouse. Um, and again, each of the pages, on the back side, there's also a mat for um, a large photo that can go in the back, or small photos and some journaling, either way. On these small tags, you can do journaling on the back or pattern paper on the back, um, either way. Um, but it goes through, and each of the pages is essentially the same, just with different um, papers. You could, as I said, do whatever embellish further embellishment to the pages you want. I kept this one real simple. Um, also, the other thing you can do is you can also put mats back behind um, the punched um, the punched edge on here if you want to do that. But I just wanted this one real simple. Made it really quick. This one took a, um, about an oh, hour and a half, two hours to do. 
Um, so it's it's a pretty quick afternoon type of project. Um, as you saw how quickly it went to put this one together tonight and then I'll get that one um, strung so that it'll fit inside the birdhouse. So quick, simple, matchbook mini album, a little history on book binding, not a lot. I'll be giving you more as we go along. Um, as I said, with each of the birdhouse, bird abodes as I'm calling them, each month the mini albums will all be different. They will all have a different binding method. Um, and then, so it'll be uh, fun. For instance, May, we're going to do an, a, a folded type. This is a pierced type. We're going to do a folded type. And I'm going to try to alternate, I think. <coughs> and um, so we'll start out with real simple. And as the months go on, we'll get more complex in terms of how the albums are bound. So May's going to have an accordion. And then um, June's going to have a ring bound album. So start out simple and get more complicated. The matchbook, super simple, quick, fast. Um, you can add as much detailing as you want or keep it super simple like I've done on this. Um, and then your album fits inside your bird abode. Slips right in, go out of the way, and inside you then have your mini album inside your birdhouse. Alrighty, so that's the first in the series, the April bird abode called April Showers. Um, as I said, all the dimensions, cutting instructions, all of that are in the pattern over available over on my website, um, as well as the kits, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, so I look forward to seeing you the first week of May with the next in the series, May Flowers. Thanks so much, so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.